Hello students, this is Dr. Ben. There are two more applications of the concepts of force and motion in Chapter 4 that we want to consider. The first of those is the topic of free fall. And free fall is vertical motion of an object that is only influenced by gravity. So free fall is, uh, is specifically an approximation of real motion where we would neglect the effect of air or the air drag that, that would be caused by an object falling through the air. And as we can see in the picture in this slide, both the yellow ball and the feather are falling at the same pace, and that would only be true in the absence of, of any air resistance. So this picture was taken in a special apparatus where all the air could be removed, and so both of these objects are falling through a vacuum. But we see that they fall at the same pace. The, the motion diagrams for the objects look, look to be exactly the same. And so objects that are in free fall um, fall regardless of their mass and also their size and shape. So in free fall, if an object is only influenced by gravity, then the acceleration of that object in free fall is equal to the acceleration due to gravity and that points in a downward direction. If we look at the motion diagram that represents freely falling motion, we can see from the diagram in the upper part of this slide that we have a series of dots that spacing is increasing with time which is indicative of an accelerating motion, and here the acceleration points downwards. If we take that same information and plot it on a graph that shows the velocity of the object if it is just released from rest as it falls, picking a coordinate system where the positive direction is up, we see that the velocity decreases in a uniform manner and the slope on this velocity versus time graph would be equal to the acceleration of the object, which in this case has a value of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that would be appropriate for this experiment done on the Earth. And for example, if we did the same experiment on the Moon, the acceleration due to gravity on the Moon is about one-sixth of that on the Earth, and so the value would be something like negative 1.6 or 1.65 meters per second squared. All right. This graph shows us uh, the vertical position of an object versus time if it was thrown upwards with some initial positive velocity. So imagine that you have an object in your hand and you throw it upwards. It leaves your hand and rises. As it rises, its velocity gets smaller and then it reaches the turning point at the top where its velocity becomes zero. And we can see on this position versus time graph that the tangent line at that point is, has a slope of zero. And then as the object starts to come back down, its velocity changes sign. The slope on the position versus time graphs will become negative. But we notice that there is a symmetry to the motion. At any particular point on the way up and on the way down, the only thing that's changed is the sign of the velocity. And that's because the same force is acting to slow the object on the way up, which is the acceleration due to gravity that's making the object speed back up on the way back down. And finally, if we take and look at the kinematic equations, applied to free fall, we would take our, our formula from the beginning of chapter 4, but we would put in the specific value that the acceleration is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and that would be appropriate for a problem where we pick the y direction to be upwards. And then that would be the value of the acceleration that we would that we would use in these equations, and then we could find the value of the final velocity or the final position based upon some knowledge of the initial values. All right. So to recap again, free fall is a, 
uh, an idealized situation where an object experiences vertical motion only under the influence of gravity. So we would neglect any effect of air or air resistance in the situation.